We're up to the roof framing in this video. So behind the camera, which you can't see, but you'll see it in some drone footage, we had the gable front to back, so we set that ridge just to lock all that in. Seems like every time we lift rake walls, we get high winds. In this case here, we're setting the ridge beam that's over the master bedroom and the master bath. We elected not to frame any interior walls. You can see there that we have lots of room for the ladders. Plus with zip roof, we'll be dried in and then we could frame that at our leisure when there was bad weather. Now, for some reason, I didn't get footage of the beam that was gonna go on the lower right to where Kyle's cutting out. I mentioned that in the last video, but anyway, you'll see that in other footage. Keep it nice and quick. Let me, is this fogged up? You tell me, like is it. It, it is recording. You tell me if it's a little foggy to you. Nope. Okay. You look amazing. You look even better in 4K. What's 4K? 4K? Okay, everybody, here's a trick I learned from Caledon Timber Framers on the interwebs last week. Just make a wrench out of a scrap piece of sheeting and then let leverage be your friend. I love that show. Here, Shane, you wanna try it? Go up. Even, even a 21 year old can use it. Thank you, Instagram. And Caledon Timber Frame, tag below. Yeah. Put in a hat. I wish I was taller. I don't use a table saw on the job site very much. I don't want to run power to it. I don't like unpacking and packing them up. But this little cordless eight and a quarter inch Milwaukee saw weighs like 30 pounds. And I'm ripping two by 10 blocks on a 712 bevel. Uh, you'll see the blocking detail up along the ridge and then at the eaves. And we've just found for our shear requirements, et cetera, that ripping a bevel is totally worth it. All of these pieces are cut off from the rafters. A lot of times we can't get 14 foot rafters, so they send us 16s on all the cutoffs end up as blocking. But that's a cordless table saw. How cool is that? And it's lightweight. Honestly, don't tell anybody, we typically hide it somewhere. And here's that blocking detail. So Kyle nails the beveled blocks between rafters as he goes. It actually makes it a little easier to set rafters because you got something to push against. He lines up the sharp point of the bevel with the top of the ridge. In this case, because it's a sealed assembly, normally we'd have an air gap. You'll probably see that in future videos. But he just nails them as he goes. Shane hands up the two by 10 rafters. Easy. So Shane and Kyle just used a pattern. Uh, sometimes we gang cut rafters. That'll be a future video. Uh, in this case, it wasn't worth setting up, at least not in my opinion. Where we're framing, even though we're a high seismic zone, we don't typically have any special hardware requirements at the ridge. We've gone over this detail with our engineer, and he just tells us how many nails to use. And it's nice and efficient because we get to use up the scrap. We're not using any special nail guns, no hardware. There you can see how it all connects at the ridge, how the ridge connects to the rake wall. Remember that was that back wall that was sided. Now at the eaves, notice that our eave framing was all pre-done. And then as Shane was at the eaves, he just blocked as he went off of a ladder. As Kyle was at the ridge, he just blocked off of a ladder. And that way when they get down to the other end, they're completely done. So you can see the framing there. I also have a video on my channel that shows how we do our eaves uh, soffits when we pre-assemble them before lifting the wall. A lot of time savings. I think you're getting an idea for that. Took a little while to work out the bugs because I make lots of mistakes. So there's this there's this particular house plan. We got two 712 gables front to back and then a 612 gable that you'll see here momentarily. But there's that 42 foot rake wall, siding windows. All we had to do is take guardrails down later. Very simple to do with um, any kind of roof framing experience. And having the gables up there also makes it safer. When you're on a ladder, nobody has to worry about falling over. So nice and straightforward. It's a bummer that it's three stories up on the front side but on the bright side, it was a really small roof. So once we got into a rhythm, it goes pretty fast. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to point out, there's the glue land that I mentioned before. So it's strapped to a shear wall and it runs all the way back where Kyle was cutting out the plates at the beginning of the video. And then you can see all the rafters land on that and then they get a little bit of hardware later. 
So Shane's all tied off and he's just taping the seams. Uh, I'm gonna get into this in a future video, probably the next video, um, how the zip system works in the tape and all that good stuff. Basically tape the seams and you're dried in. But there's gonna be more detail in, on how we do that in a future video. Okay, let me get this depth set. Uh, this is a pretty slick way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, normally we'd set them on posts. Okay, what I'm gonna do is kind of push down. Yeah, if you go, basically what I wanna do, I'll give you the gun. I've got the mark on this side. Basically, I just want to toenail it. I'm going to push it. Yeah, and then if you tap yours up, the rafter, that might be all we got. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, nice. And um, yeah, I'll toenail it a couple times here. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I was off. Let me. I guess we, we got it. So I'm at 107.6. I'm which on is, my mark. Okay, that's a layout mark. Oh, that's off. Yeah. So I'm gonna do this. X this side? Correct. So if you want to, let me, um, I'll raise this a little bit. Should I nail it in? Yeah, I think so. Now. <laughs> oh, that was too easy, dude. That was way too easy. And those plump cuts are basically perfect. Yep. So here's how we did this. Because we had the truss jib, we just suspended the ridge. We pre-screwed the rafters where they needed to go with those Simpson screws that you saw in the last video. And that was just temporary in case we needed to move something. Then we nailed them perfectly at the ridge. Now it's self-supporting and we could pop the screws because we're just gonna reuse those. They don't need to stay there, the nails are gonna hold it. So here's how that worked. The ridge just stayed suspended and we used those four rafters to get it all locked in. That way we didn't have to calculate or measure any kind of ridge posts and deal with that. Um, there's always some kind of variation and we just skipped it all by using the truss jib to hold the ridge. This was a great Friday afternoon, by the way. I mean, when things start to click and go well, then you really start to pick up momentum. And just the simple fact of using that truss jib, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe if we were to try and set that up on posts, it might've taken a half an hour to an hour because you got a signal, and not in this case, probably took us 10 minutes. I love it when that happens. It doesn't happen often enough for me, but when it does. We're gonna mark the bottom corner level. Yeah, then we'll just snap this. Right there? Yeah. Hey Kyle! Yeah. Let's go one six seven and a half, sharp to sharp. One six seven and a half. And I then think we got it right. When we set it, it's two inches down. Hill from the line, right? It depends on the roof pitches. So that's why we always plane the bottom and then we go parallel. 
Okay. And I'm going with the 42, not the 44.78. That you calculated? Oh. Um. Go with the 44, yeah. 44. Yeah. Pretty good there. Right there, yeah. Front. This is yeah the bottom piece to slipper that goes to the, the 44. Okay. That one just butted up tight. Oh, I see for the backing. Yep. All right, then what we'll do is we'll get. Measurements. You remember how to lay it out? Just pull two foot. Kinda. All right, everybody. Happy Friday. We got quite a bit done. As you can see behind me, after lunch, we got this ridge set, rafters cut, and the overframe. Would you guys like to know what an overframe is? I'll show you. <laughs> okay, so an overframe roof is when the roof overframes on top of the other. Oh, he's not done. Give us a little flutter. Give us a flutter. <laughs> oh, that's classic, dude. That is good. This might be the best update video we've ever had. Okay, let me run you over to the... Whoa! All right, get this. Whoa! Hey, get these turtles down. It's Friday, I wanna go home. Okay, okay. so you guys wanna know what an overframe is? That's my whistle. And some Basically, I don't want them to. this whole roof is framed and sheathed. Whoa. And then oh. this roof behind me frames over the top. Kyle. Overframe. Over the top. Now, on this side, it's a little funky because give you a gun. the ridge, this was easier, in my opinion. We planed that side up. That's This mark is the top of the zip. That's the underside of the zip or the framing. You want a saw? We'll whack that on Monday. We saw? have a broken hip from here that lands on the sleepers. And then we'll finish up all of the framing. So, there it is. Hey, Kyle. Not a bad view. Maybe we should have gone up like two more stories. And of course, the guys down there have blocked us in. It's like they're pouring concrete. Oh man, that had me losing it. That was pretty hilarious. I can't believe I, I remembered that. Or I've learned it. Okay, anyway, happy Friday, everybody. Check Hope you guys out. have a good weekend. We'll deal with all this stuff when we get down to the eaves. Yeah, and then I'm definitely gonna blow this off. Hey, you just dropped that on the ground. What do you have to say for yourself? You didn't even say heads up. I knew that nobody was down there. Oh. Okay, let me blow this. I finally got smart. I, I don't run into this scenario very often, so I got smart this time and took a picture and labeled the angles. So because it's an irregular roof, we have a broken hip that lands from a 612 intersecting with the 712. The miter and bevel up at the ridge is easy to calculate. I just like to use build calc now. I used to do it longhand, but my brain is not as elastic as it used to be. The miter and bevel at the bottom, however, is a different animal. So the saw setting for the bevel is the same as the backing angle for that irregular roof on the 712 side. And then the miter is your level cut times two subtracted from 90. Clear as mud? Yeah, maybe we'll get into that in a future video. We gotta build this house again. Okay, there is the roof. All skeleton is framed. That is ready to be sheeted. 
I'm gonna get into that in the next video. Thank you guys so much for following along. Please like and subscribe, and hey, why not tweet that this is the best YouTube channel that you've ever even imagined?